Hello, everyone. I'm Rick Bozinski, Chief Economist at IBIS World. Today, I'm moving away from my podcast format to a webinar, the reason being that along with my IBIS World partner in crime, Robert Miles, we've compiled some interesting data and a tool designed to provide guidance for how well industries are positioned for recovery after the COVID-19 crisis fades. So there's a tremendous amount of data here that you may want to devote some time to peruse. There are essentially three parts to this webinar. First, I'll provide a quick review from my two podcasts, episodes one and two, that were primarily about the COVID-19's policies involving social distancing. Next, I'll move on beyond social distancing to why selected industries and industry groups are ill positioned for recovery. Finally, I'll review some Bureau of Economic Analysis data and turn to discussing three specific industry groups, those being farming, construction, and machinery. The following two slides come from the forthcoming white paper I mentioned in my social distancing podcast. Uh, these are a sample of businesses that are most impacted by social distancing. I discuss these industries within the context of their degree of historical volatility, which renders them difficult to predict, and what their risk trajectory was prior to the virus outbreak. I also provided several examples on how the current situation is unique and very different from past downturns. This hopefully sheds some light on which businesses would snap back quickly and those that would likely lag behind. This list includes businesses in the transportation travel related area and also entertainment and recreation. The list also includes retail and restaurants, education, and other key miscellaneous services impacted by social distancing. You may wish to pause and take a closer look at these lists. Let's move on from social distancing and see which selected industries are ill positioned for recovery. The concoction of this alchemy is not all that mysterious, by the way. So let's start with the three components of this analysis. The first are metrics from Ibis World's industry early warning system that has been in use by major clients for over 15 years. The second uses industry revenue data warehoused by Ibis World. And the third uses BEA industry data and their industry definitions. These three are churned into an industry volatility metric, a risk trend prior to the COVID-19 crisis, and a calculation of the compound annual growth rate during the last cycle. All of this is weighted in equal shares to form an industry-specific risk intensity index. This index can be viewed as the relative risk positioning of an industry as we await a recovery. Since I mentioned the BEA data, I thought it might be prudent to show you some of it here. Plus, a client asked me about this just last week. There are roughly 65 BEA-defined industries. In this table, the middle column illustrates the average peak to trough of industry value added, which is a GDP concept, through the 11 recessions since 1948. I sorted this from worst to best in the following two slides, along with the compound annual growth rate of revenue from the previous cycle. Take time to pause and take a closer look if you want. Not a surprise at all that motor vehicles lead the list. Near the top are farms and machinery, that I'll disentangle in a moment. Construction, that I'll also consider, was pretty flat during recoveries historically. And here's the second half of the BEA list, the historically healthier recession recovery industries. Let's complete this journey by turning to a few BEA industries and disaggregate a bit. The first is farming, where there are some concerns going forward. The first group, soybean, wheat, and cotton farming, plus sugarcane harvesting, are all historically volatile businesses. Wheat and cotton farms share the unfortunate distinction of being on a downward trend prior to the COVID-19 debacle. 
Chicken egg production has been on a downward path as well and fared poorly during the 2007 to 2010 cycle. Not a good omen. Beef cattle production doesn't appear to raise a red flag, but this clearly depends on how quickly virus outbreaks at meat processing plants can be contained. How about construction-related businesses going forward? Well, many are on shaky ground. This includes the likes of home and apartment builders and also commercial building construction. Also in jeopardy are many land developers. Think about the remarks I made in my podcasts about the sorry state of malls and shopping centers. So this doesn't augur well for developers. Be reminded, however, that construction performance varies widely from region to region. So you'll just have to pick your spots. And finally, what about America's machinery manufacturers? Unfortunately, many of these businesses are not well positioned for recovery. So check out this table. The first two industries include construction and oil and gas machinery manufacturers. No surprise here. Others like wind turbine makers suffer from a triple whammy. They are highly volatile. They were on the decline before the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, and they also performed poorly during the past cycle. Well, that's it for today. In my next installment, I'll continue with this theme of identifying industries that aren't well positioned for a turnaround. Hope to see you then. Stay safe and Godspeed.